let's make carne guisada tacos. Now I'm gonna call this easy. I am making the carne guisada on the stove top, but the easy part comes from the flour tortillas that I purchased from the store bakery. I will show you how to make soft flour tortillas from scratch, should you want to go ahead and do that. Either way, it's gonna be good. Okay, to get started with this carne guisada, I'm working with two and a half pounds of beef chuck roast. I'm gonna cut this up into like maybe half inch pieces or small cubes. Instead of going with beef bouillon powder, I'm gonna use uh, beef stock and salt into the mix or into the pot to season this. I'm also gonna be adding some whole cumin seeds and black peppercorn, and I'm gonna crush those up. I'll be using maybe one or two teaspoons of that. Here's some all-purpose flour. This is gonna to help to create that carne guisada gravy to create that roux. And I'm working with one small onion, uh, three Roma tomatoes, garlic, maybe three or four cloves, and I had three potatoes left in my potato bucket. So I am going to add that to the pot. This is optional because I like to make carne guisada without potatoes most of the time, but I wanna make these tacos hearty. So potatoes are going in. And uh, let's get started. I'm gonna prep all the ingredients, chop everything up, and gonna start browning the meat. So I have all of my beef uh, cut into chunks. What I'm going to do now is add, just make sure you coat the bottom with cooking oil and get that preheated very well because we're gonna brown the meat. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt, just do that. And then when I add it to the pan, I'll add a little bit more. Maybe start with like a half teaspoon of fine salt. Okay, now add the meat. I'm gonna get a little bit more salt and do the other side. And I'm gonna let this brown well. It's gonna take time. There we go. And I'm just gonna let that go for a couple of minutes, then I'm gonna start mixing it around. I'm gonna turn up the heat just to the highest setting. I really want this to saute well. Okay. I'm gonna work with about a teaspoon and a half of this crushed black peppercorn and whole cumin seed uh, mix. Gonna shake in my ground cumin and black peppercorn mix. Give that a saute here. Now, Let's add the onions right in the center and continue to saute and brown the meat and the onion together. Now for the tomato. We keep on going <laughs> till everything is browned and sauteed. Okay, let's go in with the garlic. And this is what you're looking for. Every The onions have brown, caramelized, and sauteed. The tomatoes are breaking down. Things are getting browned and cooked in this pot. It already smells amazing. For the potatoes, gonna add those in. And I'm gonna add another pinch of salt. And when I say pinch, I'm going in with like a quarter teaspoon of salt onto the potato. And I'm gonna continue to brown and saute everything for another five minutes. Here I have all-purpose flour, and I'm just gonna start shaking in flour to create a roux. Two, three, six, 
I think I'll go with eight tablespoons. I think it's going to be, I really want the gravy to, I want the gravy to be on the thicker side. And now I'm just going to mix and keep browning until you get a beautiful crust at the bottom of your pot. You can see that's already happening. That fond is going to be great. Okay, so I'm working with 32 ounces of beef stock going in. Oh, it smells so good. Now I'm going to start picking up that fond from the bottom of the pan. You want to make sure you scrape it. it smells wonderful. Okay, so I'm going to go in with one extra cup of liquid in the form of water. <laughs> I'm adding a cup of water. You could add more beef broth or stock um, and give that a mix. I'm going to cover with the lid and I am going to lower the heat and I want this to simmer for about an hour and a half. And it should be done. If not, you might need to add a little extra liquid and let it continue simmering until you get tender chunks of beef. Okay, so it's 30 minutes in to the simmer time and I'm going to give it a stir. You can kind of lift the lid and stir it throughout the cooking process just to make sure nothing burns or gets stuck to the bottom. Oh, it smells fantastic already. Oh yeah, see it kind of, whoops, you want to give things a stir because there's flour in the mix so it does get kind of, uh, sometimes it'll get spots where it sort of gets stuck. And the starchiness from the potato also adds to, <laughs> to that. Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Oh, it smells so good. Okay, going back on with the lid. And you can adjust the heat a little bit. If it's simmering too too much, just kind of lower the heat and let it keep going. Okay, so it has been an hour of cook time. At this point, you'll want to taste it for salt and seasoning and adjust to your preference. I'm going to give that a mix. I already uh, tasted this for salt and seasoning, so I did add more salt. And I'm going to crank up the heat a little bit because now I really want some of the uh, liquid in this to reduce just a little bit. I'm going to let this go for another 20 minutes uncovered. But for the most part, the meat is tender. I just want to thicken the sauce a little bit more and reduce. So, eh, like a medium heat. And let that keep going for another 15, 20 minutes. And then it should be done. Okay, so these are the store-bought flour tortillas that I like to buy uh, at my local grocery store in the bakery section. But let me show you how to make them from scratch. Here I have around three cups of all-purpose flour. It's to be exact 400 grams. To that, I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt, two teaspoons of baking powder. Mix that. Now I'm going to add a third cup of butter. You could add a third cup of shortening, a third cup of lard. If you prefer to use oil, add a quarter cup or four tablespoons of cooking oil. That also works. I like to use bacon grease sometimes. So once this is mixed, I'm going to be using hot water. As hot as your hands can take it. Okay. This is one cup. Start with like three quarters of a cup and start mixing it carefully. You can even start with like, you know, a wooden spoon or something that doesn't. Okay. 
Now I'm going to combine, mix everything together. Keep it in the bowl for now. Okay, I'm going to start kneading this on my work surface. Grab some flour, flour your work surface. The dough is sticky and tacky. Now, if you find that the dough is dry, then don't flour your work surface. You might need to add more water. But I'm going to knead this for about mm, five to 10 minutes until a smooth dough ball forms. Now I'm just going to separate them into at least 12. I'm gonna go for 14 to 15 dough balls. Now that the dough balls are separated, I am going to place it back into the bowl. And just kind of shape the dough balls and repeat the process. Here I have a damp cloth, and I'm just going to place it over all of my dough balls and rest the dough for at least 15 minutes. I'm gonna lightly sprinkle my work surface. Now it's time to roll these out. I'm gonna take one and bring it over to my flour. Use your rolling pin and let's roll it out. You want to be careful not to use too much flour because it will work back into the dough. If it shrinks back too much when you're rolling it out, you need to rest the dough longer. Okay, so now I'm going to take this over to the bowl and hang it over the edge and repeat the process for about four of them before I start to cook them. I have my preheated griddle and I'm gonna cook the tortilla. It should bubble up within the first 10 seconds of placing it on your griddle. If it doesn't, it needs to be hotter. Okay, I'm gonna place it in my basket here carefully and I'm gonna wrap it and just repeat the process for the other tortillas. Okay, so now that your tortillas are done, time to make a very simple taco. Really all it is is your favorite tortilla and you add your carne guisada right to it. Top with your favorite salsa you got a good meal. I hope you give this recipe a try. I hope you like it. And thanks for watching.